In this video, I'm building a super king-sized bed out of some hardwood salvaged from a demolition that we did recently when we took down this lean-to conservatory at the back of our bungalow, which I did a series of videos about, and I'll leave links to those in the description box. This timber is mostly Moranti and it has a lot of old nails and screws embedded in it, so I'm going to need to deal with it very carefully. There are also some holes that will need filling and some rot that I'll need to cut away. I'd already made a cut list for this project and here I'm sorting through everything to make sure that I have enough material for what I wanted to build. And I want to keep the straightest pieces of timber for the rails that will run the length of the bed and sighting down the end helps to see which ones are the straightest. Okay, so I've definitely got enough timber to build what I'd planned to build, which is great. But before I cut anything to length, I think I better just double check the dimensions of the mattress that we've bought. So unlike most YouTubers, we actually bought our mattress with real money. It came vacuum packed and seeing it inflate was pretty cool. This is a super king sized mattress as we wanted to go bigger than our old bed, mainly because Dylan the cat usually takes up most of the space. But also our bedroom is pretty big, so a bigger bed will help to fill the room. I started cutting clean ends and cutting each piece to length using the mitre saw and I'm labeling each piece so that I don't get confused. Then it was over to the table saw to make some rip cuts. Here I'm removing where the hinge recesses were on this timber that came from the old door. And I can also cut away all of the rotten areas which were worse than expected actually. And this is where I found out that I didn't have quite enough material for what will be one of the horizontal rails of the headboard. So I'm going to need to glue up some pieces to form that part. I cut a 45 degree angle to the ends of two shorter pieces and then laminated those to a longer piece and then ran it through the thicknesser to clean it up. And once that was done, unless you were looking at it close up, I don't think you'd be able to tell that this wasn't one piece. All the other pieces of timber were plain too, but I'm going to skip over that as it's not that interesting and you've probably seen me mill up timber before, but basically I'm just getting everything to the dimensions I need and being careful not to let the blades in my machine hit any metal. So here for example, there are some pin nails and I'm using a nail punch just to push them further into the timber so that I can take a couple of millimetres off the surface. This wood that came from the door I think might be mahogany, really nice looking once planed up. These pieces had a routed profile on the corners which I really didn't like so I removed that first by planing away some of the material and then by fitting a chamfer bit in my router table so that I can add a nice chunky bevel to the edges to replace that roundover. I needed to fill all the old holes next and the only filler that I had on hand was really light in colour so I thought I'd try adding some stain to darken it, which actually worked pretty well. I wasn't aiming for a perfect colour match as I can always do some colour touch ups later if needed but once the excess was sanded away the colour was actually a pretty good match. You can see in this shot that there's a big colour difference between the Moranti and the Mahogany, so I'm going to be staining the frame later to get everything matching better. With all the milling done, I could start offering things up and marking up where I need to cut the joinery. I also marked up a halfway point to the bottom of the leg and then using a straight edge I marked a line between that and where the bottom of the horizontal rail of the headboard would be and this will create a nice taper for the legs of the bed. And then at the top of the leg I marked a halfway point again and marked another straight line on the opposite side to the previous taper between the mark and where the top of the rail would be. And this is going to give me a really interesting shape for the leg which I thought would look really cool. Here I'm marking where the rails will meet the inside of the legs and for the top rail I'm going to leave a 15mm reveal at the top. I can then cut away the tapers and this is where I had my first problem of the project, I hit metal. I think I caught it just in time before completely ruining the blade just by backing out of the cut and the blade seemed to still cut okay fortunately. And here I'm using a chisel to separate the timber where the metal was so that I can get it out of there. And it was an old screw so I used a pair of pliers just to twist it out. I then used my hand plane to clean away all the rough surface left by the bandsaw blade. Now 
Then a bit of sanding and the tapers are looking nice. With the chamfer bit still set up on my router table, I can then add the bevel to the inside edges of the legs and I'm stopping just before I get to the areas where the joinery will be later. I also added a smaller bevel to the horizontal rails just by lowering the bit in the table. I'm going to use dominoes to assemble and here I'm carefully marking up where I want them. And I'm going to cut these first holes on the tightest setting and glue the floating tenons in place straight away which will hopefully make for a less stressful glue up when it comes to assembling all the pieces. Marking up the corresponding holes in the leg pieces was a bit more complicated as I want the thinner rails to sit perfectly centred to the middle of the inside of the legs. So I did lots of careful measuring and marking here because I knew that I'd need to adjust the fence on the domino to get these in the perfect position. And when that was done I just did a couple of test cuts to make sure that everything would line up okay and it looked perfect. Oh and those holes were cut on the middle setting just to give a little side to side wiggle room for the floating tenons. Then I did some hand sanding while I had easy access to those stopped chamfers. Originally I was planning to route out a channel right in the centre here to accommodate the headboard but unfortunately I've got another issue. I'm pretty sure there's a nail in here. Um, if I hover a magnet over it you'll see that there's definitely some metal in there so I don't want to be running my router bit down here but because the bed is going to spend its life against a wall and the back of the headboard won't be visible I think I'm just going to add a small cleat at the back to support the headboard. Now onto assembly and I can apply glue and hit everything together with a mallet. Clamping on a plywood square helps to keep the assembly well, square. And for the glue up I did try clamps at first but that didn't really work out so well so I ended up using a couple of ratchet straps that happened to be just long enough. All looked good and it was a cold day in the workshop about 8 degrees celsius so I took the assembly into the heated house which will help the glue to go off. For the headboard and footboard I have this nice piece of plywood with what I think is an Iroko veneer on one side. This sheet should be just big enough to get both of the panels I need out of it, so I ripped it down at the table saw. So I've now got all of the shaping done with the legs and all of the joinery cut for the footboard end of the bed. And I've got the same issue that I had with the headboard in that testing with a magnet, I can see that there are a few pieces of metal in here. But unlike the headboard end of the bed, this isn't going to be up against a wall, so I really do want to cut these recesses out. So it's time to go digging for some metal. So the footboard end of the bed is basically going to be exactly the same design as the headboard end, just shorter in height, and with a housing groove to accommodate the panel instead of cleats. Most of this damage is going to be hidden as it's right where the housing groove is going to be. Some of the screws I just couldn't get out, so instead I'm going to hit them down into the wood and I'll just need to make sure that my housing groove is less deep than where the metal is. After setting up a straight bit in the router table I can then route out the groove, making sure that the workpiece is pushed firmly against the fence at all times. And I'm lifting the bit in between each pass to take it easier on the machine until the groove is at the depth I need it to be. For the horizontal rails the groove can just be cut all the way down the length. And then I can measure up what size to cut the panel, making sure to cut it so that it sits inside the groove on all four sides. I can then glue it into the groove and get the footboard assembled. I grabbed some Iroko offcuts which I can use to make the cleats to hold the panel in place on the headboard end of the bed. Before fitting them though I got all of the final sanding done up to 120 grit while I had good access to everything and these cleats got cut to length 
and glued and pinned in place. Then I can add glue and fit the panel. So far I've spent about 16 hours on this project and there is still a lot to do. So please do subscribe to the channel and join me for the next video where I'll be completing the project. If you'd like to get early access to my videos, exclusive content, free project plans and cut lists and a name credit at the end of my videos, check out the Patreon and channel membership links in the description box below. Thanks for watching.